So another episode of Forge Diaries. This is my most recent practice piece that I'm working on. Uh, I, this is a um, I'm working on developing Shinogi Zakuri geometry. Um, I know that tantos or daggers of this length are typically Hira Zakuri and not Shinogi Zakuri, but um, I'm just uh, trying to learn the geometry of this type of blade so that I can move up and, and make them make longer ones, make wakazashis and katanas. Anyway, I, I, I know it's not really highly visible, but you, you should be able to see here that um, the shinogi line, which is this, ri this uh, ridge or crest that runs along the blade, curves upward right here, and it curves parallel to and in proportion to the curve of the tip of the blade. I got it really uh, symmetrical, I think. It's on, it's on both sides. You can see that line there. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit here and uh, see if we can look at the tip of that. You can see that those two lines form a wide point, right? Right there, there's a wide point in the tip of the blade, and that's nice and symmetrical. That wide point is created by the shinogi line as it runs along here and then curves upward and where the two shinogi lines meet at that point it creates kind of a wide spot and that's very symmetrical so I think I've done a reasonable job with shinogi zakuri uh, geometry in the blade portion the blade starts a little wide here it narrows a little bit there so it tapers it also tapers just a little bit in thickness now the tang, I didn't do so great with that. It's probably acceptable. E ever so slightly curves because I, I plan on this curving during the quench. Anyway, it's okay. It's not bad. Uh, I don't intend for it to be anything special, but just to practice claying and quenching, we're going to actually clay this blade up and quench it as well, just for the fun of practicing. So it'll, it should end up with a hamon and I'll probably go through the whole process of polishing it and put a handle on it just just for the practice so anyway there we go Shinogi Zakuri blade alright here's my highly trained Japanese assistant placing the clay on the blade the truth is Katie actually does a really great job um, not sure why, but she does a much better job than the rest of us at, at um, putting all the different parts. You can see there's like a wavy line that runs down the length of the blade. And then there are these little lines that have to be laid in. And Katie's got really good technique for laying in those lines. So, I've got the blade formed and shaped and now we're placing the clay the clay will uh, be baked on if you put it on if you begin heating up the blade in the forge in preparation to quench it before the clay has had a chance to dry then it just flakes and falls off so after the clay has been put on then we're going to bake the clay onto the blade then we'll quench it All right, so here we are baking the clay onto the blade. Uh, the way I do that is by heating up the forge until it's nice and hot, and then just turning off the flame and letting the blade sit inside the heated forge. The thing is, I tried baking it in the oven, and while that works extremely well, um, the pan that it sits on in the oven gets this really ugly black soot on it. And I know that it's not only gathering on the pan, it must also be gathering on the inside of the oven. And I don't know exactly what it is, if it has some chemicals in it or whatever. So <clears throat> whatever that is, I don't want it on the inside of my oven and then possibly getting on my food. So rather than heating it up in the oven, we, I heat the forge up for about a minute until the inside of the forge is glowing hot. Then I turn the flame off and just sit the blade with the clay on it inside the forge and let it um, let the clay harden baking like that inside the forge. Um, <clears throat> the reason you can't just put it in the forge if the clay hasn't been baked on, and we discovered this because I let the clay sit on it for uh, a day until it was dried, 
but it's still too much moisture in it. So when you put it inside the forge with the flame going and it heats up like that, the water evaporates off, sometimes kind of explosively, and little chips and pieces of the clay come off. And those pieces of the clay that remain on the blade don't remain adhered very well, so it ruins the quench. And so you do have to bake the clay on in order for it to uh, really be effective. So there's the clay baking on. After it's baked on, then we're going to quench this katana. As you can see, it's still daylight, and so we're going to wait until nighttime, and we'll quench this blade tonight after it gets dark. So here's the blade I just quenched. This is my Shinogi Zakuri workpiece. Uh, it's, I don't know that it's necessarily intended to be anything other than a practice piece, but in this case it's turned out really well. You can see that it acquired a kind of a gentle curve. I'm going to see if I can demonstrate that. So it acquired this gentle curve from there to there during the quench, which I think is beautiful and perfect. Uh, I built a little bit of a curve into the handle to start with. Right. So the whole thing has a, a pretty nice curve that includes the curve I built into the handle because the handle doesn't get heat treated as violently as the rest of it. And so it may not, and, and it's not differentially heated, so it's not going to curve like the rest of it. So you have to build some curve into it. Anyway, here, now that it's dark, you can see my koshinogi that I was trying to show earlier, which turned out looking really nice and quite symmetrical on both sides. Anyway, so it's been heat treated. I need to temper it right now, so I'm going to take it and put it in my oven where I'm going to heat it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and then allow it to air cool and then I'm going to begin the process of polishing it. Anyway, there you go, that's my current piece. <laughs>